So to the north of Newcastle city centre lies an area of land which is quite unlike anything else that close to a city centre. This is an area where no development has taken place. It's larger than London's Hyde Park and also New York Central Park. You're 10 minutes away from Newcastle City Centre by walking. However, this landscape feels very different than the city that surrounds it. If you look at this map of Newcastle in 1844, you see an area to the northwest of the city centre. This has some minor development on. Compare this now with a map of Newcastle today. You can see how the city has expanded around this green space, but very few intrusions or development has occurred on this. This is the story of Newcastle's Town Moor and the reason it exists. Whilst we might think of the Town Moor today as a very natural landscape, that is not really the case. This has always been a deeply exploited land. This used to house a former race course before it moved to Gosforth. This featured a grandstand, and as well if you've seen my previous video on the Victoria Tunnel, it was clear that that ran through this area as well, with coal mines extracting coal from this area of the Town Moor. Now, to understand why the Town Moor isn't as a natural landscape as we think it is, we need to understand the Parliamentary Act that protects it. This is the Parliamentary Act of 1774 under which the city corporation could lease up to 100 acres of the town moor for cultivation. This agricultural cultivation led to the improvement of drainage across the landscape, and this was one of the first major interventions that changed this away from moorland into what we see today. The natural state of the land was further impacted by Newcastle's role as a major coal exporter, with several way leaves related to coal extraction being allowed on the moor. Within the Second World War, open cast coal mining occurred on the moor, and even during the 1970s, during the construction of the Central Motorway that travels through the moor, a company was allowed to form an open cast mine to during this process. So you might be wondering, has anything ever actually been built on the moor? Some parts of the moor actually have been built on, Take, for example, Lees's Park, which was the first part of the moor to be landscaped into a Victorian park. This is complete with a lake and a river which actually flows underneath it. This map of Newcastle in 1871 shows a major part of Newcastle missing, and this is the Royal Victoria Infirmary. This whole hospital, including the dental hospital and also Newcastle University's medical school, were all built on part of the town moor. And of course, Newcastle's famous St James's Park is also located on land which was formerly the town moor. Later in 1878 and 1880, two smaller parks were created. These were Brandling Park, located adjacent to Jesmond, and what is now known as Exhibition Park, which is located adjacent to Brandling Park across the Central Motorway. This had major exhibition halls developed on the site with a huge celebration of the north held here. All of these were removed now, except from one, which is Wyland Brewery. This building was previously used as a museum for some period of time, but now it is a food and drink venue and brewery. This shows how parts of the mall, which were originally not developed on, have now been used to create some great civic parks, as well as other civic structures and hospitals. To me, it seems a natural process that as the city expanded, parts of the town mall were turned over for what were deemed as useful purposes and necessary things for the development of the city. So why since the 1800s has no development occurred on the moor and these boundaries stayed the same? And why has the same not been done to meet the growing needs of the city? In fact, in the 1960s, there was a proposal to transform the town moor. This was to turn this from what is now quite a barren landscape into a great regional park the likes of London's Hyde Park or Central Park with a dedicated landscaping scheme and attractions to visit within this. This would have rivaled other great cities' parks. This map in 1965 as part of Newcastle's leisure plan demonstrates the overall proposals. A landscape competition was held with a first prize of £2,000. This was held by the Freeman and the council to develop the town more as a regional park. The facilities on the site included golf courses, ski slopes, caravan sites, horse riding areas, nature reserves, botanical gardens, a hopping site, and car parks, alongside other things such as allotment gardens and playing fields. 
Most importantly, space for cattle grazing. The total cost of the scheme was expected to be £250,000 to transform this. So what went wrong with the scheme? It was known that preparations were undertaken to start this development of the town moor. But beyond that, little information is actually known. A newspaper article from the time states what happened in regards to the scheme. Following this up, it states, well, nothing really, which is what you can say about the development of the moor. That leaves us here today with a good number of years passing since these original plans in the 1960s, with no real way forward for developing the moor and it's remained the space it is today. And I think the town moor forms one of the greatest wasted spaces within the city. What could be a mix of playing fields, recreation and grazing land alongside this great regional park instead forms a giant monoculture of grassland. The town moor is often referred to as the green lung in the city. Unfortunately, the case is the town moor features very few trees other than on its boundaries, which means this is mainly a monoculture of grassland, which unfortunately isn't that great in terms of providing any benefits to air quality or anything the like. There is no green lung in the town moor. There was centuries ago when this formed a woodland. However, medieval shipbuilding in Newcastle stripped this land of all its trees, and this is the barren state we see it in today. And of all the great events that were previously held here, like the Exhibition in the North and civic events which are held on this space, all we are left with is the hoppings and a few festivals which are held here. Maybe it's time we looked at this space with a lot more imagination of what this could be and what this could actually provide for the city.